Ah, hello. You've caught me on one of my Tour de Force tours. This time I'm in the Kent countryside, not far from Westrum, and I am visiting Chartwell, the former home of Sir Winston Churchill, now looked after by the National Trust. For this shoot, I am using the Olympus EM1 Mark II and the 12 to 100 lens. Nothing else, it's all handheld because tripods are not allowed inside National Trust properties. You can take photographs, but no tripods or indeed flash. So, let's go and see how I did. I think the garden might be a little uh, easier. It's a lovely sunny day. I'm going to have trouble with contrast, I know. So I'm going to have to spot meter. But anyway, let's get on with the job. Okay, come with me. Regulars to my channel will know that I do most of my traveling by, yes, public transport. Being the proud owner of a bus pass and able to get to destinations for free, even if it means catching three buses, you don't hesitate. And anyway, you can just sit back and enjoy the views and let someone else do the driving. However, the bus did not go all the way to Chartwell, but for the sake of my physical health and well-being, I combined my visit to Chartwell with a 10-mile walk from Limpsfield Chart to Westrum, with the added bonus of plenty of photo opportunities on the way. Much of the outward walk was through woodland, and there was a hint of autumn. Although I wasn't hungry, it was heartening to witness that table and chairs are provided for refreshment purposes in the depths of the forest. Upon arrival at Chartwell, it became rather clear that it was busy, requiring my skills of people management. Churchill's first visit to Chartwell was in 1921, and immediately he was enchanted by the view from the house overlooking the Kent Weald, so he bought it for £5,000. It was just an hour's drive from London, and it became the family home from 1924 until his death in 1965. But the house underwent many changes before they moved in. Following his death, the estate passed to the National Trust, who opened it to the public in 1966, with much of the property, including the furnishings, left as it would have looked in the 1920s and 30s. Churchill was made Prime Minister in May 1940 during World War II, which today he is best remembered. However, the muse of painting came to his rescue much earlier from the Gallipoli campaign that failed disastrously in 1915. He became a scapegoat and resigned from government. Over the years, he produced more than 550 paintings, of which a third are on display in the studio. So far, so good. That is, avoiding people in my photographs. But there is a queue for the house tour. One of the benefits of hand-holding a camera is that you can work 
quickly, essential when other people are milling about. The Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II and the Zuiko 12-100 Pro Lens both have image stabilizers that work together allowing sharp handheld images in low light at shutter speeds unthinkable a few years ago. Holding your breath also helps. I saved to RAW so that I could tweak white balance and exposure in the comfort of my home. A sunny day increases contrast, spot meter highlights and then correct shadows in Lightroom as discussed in one of my other productions. The park landscaping was done under Churchill's direction, including its centerpiece, the two lakes. Today it is commemorated by a sculpture by Oscar Nemon, showing Winston and Clementine seated by the largest of the lakes, peacefully surveying the scene in quiet satisfaction. I continued my walk to Westerham via the hamlet of French Street, enjoying the distant prospect of Westerham backed by the North Downs. As a token of respect by the people of Westerham, a bronze statue of Winston Churchill sits on the green, again the work of Oscar Neyman. 